What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps and you better wake your ass up because on today's show we're going to talk about where our confidence comes from, Fosco. I think that's an interesting topic. I think it's a really interesting topic and I think you just pushed me uh, to kind of open the show when I do open it. Uh, with some of those roots. All right. I like yeah, it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to get Hey, Mo's on vacation. So hey, Mo's like can, hanging by the water. By the pool. He's getting he's tan. Kicking it. Dude, he's getting a tan, <laughs> you know, like, like he needs one. But, you know, he looks great how he is. Shout out to Mo. Shout out to Mo's tan. Mo will be back soon. Per, uh, permanent tan. Permanent tan. Dot com. Uh, all right. Today it's brought to you by different.com. Actually, dot co. Brought to you by commonbond.co forward slash biceps john. Yeah, uh, Common Bond's been a great supporter of us, and I believe it's because our listeners are their perfect demo. We've yes. had countless uh, listeners email us, DM us, just about how being able to deal with a company that refinances your college debt and provides, like, at a default base, a lower interest rate that you can process in 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. By going to commonbond.co backslash biceps, it's legitimately saving people money. We say it all Tons the time. On average, it's saving people twenty four thousand dollars over the life of their loan. So, you know, if you have student debt, like why wouldn't you at least give this a shot? Yeah. Unreal. Also brought to you by Capterra, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash biceps. Capterra is the online resource for everything uh, that you need that's software related over 750,000 reviews in 700 categories of software so if you got a business you need some software Capterra is the spot the only yeah. spot agreed all right so John without further ado I get to bring you into oh, Fosco's dude. world okay. I get to play Maurice today Shit. this is amazing all right so Hailing from the Windy City. I hear the music, bro. Don't from North that. Carolina. Actually, from Lombard, Illinois. Six foot six, 215 pounds. Looking lean today. Kind of accurate. Kind of accurate. <laughs> 218 pounds. I got a cut, though. That's accurate. Cut on my arm. Without further ado, Donnie Fosco. Thank you for the cheers. Bill everybody. Cartwright. I, I appreciate that. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to take this show to a deep place, but I have to tell you, please. And I, and I know I was texting you. Um, you recommended a book um, that not only I read through in about a day and a half, but then I bought the audio book and I listened. It's really good, by the way. Yeah, it's 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 David Goggins' book. Um, it can't hurt me, you know. And um, it's just from start to finish, um, it, it's unbelievable because I think that guy, um, and and I'm not influenced easily by, by people. At all. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> and, uh, but he is so consistent in like the fact that he's willing to go to places of, you know, telling the truth about embarrassing things to brutal things. And he shows how he takes every single black eye in stride. Right. And he grow and he grows from it. And, um, one thing he pressed on, and if you have not read this book or listened to it, please do. Cause it's a potential, I think it's a potential life changer if you let it, because this guy is on, some other shit dude straight up i i think it's helped take me to a, another another level mentally just by applying a, a couple of the things and listening and, and the audio is a very different experience than the book too very different which i'm glad you i didn't know you downloaded i think i'm glad yep. you did. did did both got through both and it you know what i think what's central to his book which i tried to put into practice and another thing i loved about his book before i get into my segment is that he has 10 challenges Yes. So he wants you to go through the book and then apply these 10 challenges. So ultimately, it's not just, you know, he, he says in the book, he says, motivation's bullshit. It, <laughs> it, it's all bullshit because after it, you're left empty. And we talk about yeah, that a lot absolutely. on the show, right? But, 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 but being driven and having a purpose is not because that's ever present. So motivation yep, never bullshit. goes away. You know, you know what I'm saying? So 
part of, I think, the main tenant of the book was kind of like owning good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, like who you are and what what made you. And I think a lot of times the things that make us were ashamed of because we we didn't get to control them. Yeah. And they they hurt and they suck, but we we can't hide from them and we can never use them in any kind of beneficial way or teaching way or as strength if we don't confront them in the rawest way, like the rawest way, like reliving it and running your brain with an adult filter through that thing that may be a childhood memory. And the whole point of that, according to him, and so I'm going to get into is that it breeds the most strength when you can face it down and crush it <laughs> and get through it because that's what most people hide from their whole life. They hide, they hide from their life. And those are the indirect reasons that they don't get what they want. So I was thinking about, you know, putting the pieces together on myself. And I've always had this thought, but I never really broke it down. So you have to understand when I was growing up, um, once I grasped as a man, probably as a 12 year old, um, that I grew up in a house where my mother was abused. Um, I had to grasp the fact that as a, a, a man by definition, um, e even though I was a kid that I did nothing about it, that, that I allowed it. And, and, um, I'm smart. I'm smart enough to understand that. Yeah. Okay. When you're seven, when can't you're eight, do it, yeah. you, you can't do anything about it. But like there, there was a, there was a severe effect to that, that, um, that, that created a monster. And what happened was like when you, when I started going through puberty and started physically growing, mm -hmm. um, I, I felt like, like someone had neutered me. Like I felt like my father had basically taken my manhood from me by doing that in my house. And I didn't make him pay for it. You felt responsible. I felt 100% responsible because wow. in my mind, a woman cannot defend herself sure. from a, 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 a large man. <clears throat> and when I started to physically progress, it became everybody's problem that I felt, and I didn't even know I really felt it until you think back on it, that I felt like I wasn't a man. So... What I subconsciously did, but I didn't even care to think about it, was in every instance I could take, I had to prove, and it wasn't even proving, it was, it was insecurity, to myself and let the whole world know that I'm a fucking man. And I did it through the most inappropriate means. I did it through hurting people. I did it through, at that time, repeating what he did, not to women, but to, to men, like mm -hmm. uh, imposing my will in the most disgusting, kind of disrespectful, um, inappropriate way. And I hurt people. I scared people. Um, and I thrived on it. I fucking thrived on it. I thrived on making people fear me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because I had so much fear and it, I knew the power... Fear is a powerful thing. Oh, yeah. And I knew the power of it. And I wanted people to know because I felt so uh, powerless when I was younger that motherfucker, like, I got power and I'm going to show it in every instance I could. And um, from doing that, like, I can't tell you how, uh, I guess, regretful I am. Of, of of the vicious, vicious things I did because I hadn't worked through those feelings. Yeah. If I worked through those feelings, people who, innocent by all accounts in, in some situations, 
wouldn't have been harmed. And I don't know to this day if, if me doing things to them, you know, I was, I was never a bully, right? I was never a bully. I never picked on the weak, but I always, I always wanted to make an example of someone to, to, to show it. So I, I want to make that very clear. I, I wasn't a bully, but I always, I always found my way into finding my way into, uh, hurting somebody. So I guess looking back at that, uh, when you're a man, it's like, wow, it, 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 you think about it and, um, there's no way that you can reconcile it. It's what's, what's done is, done. is done. And, um, it makes me want to reach out to certain people and talk to certain people because it's, because I'm, because I'm ashamed of it. Um, but I don't want to flip this into a positive thing, but what I can tell you is that sense of, uh, like I can take on the world, even though it came from a false place, um, built up my confidence in an unhealthy way. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. it was, it was healthy, but it was in a, uh, unhealthy way. So there was some strange benefit to it where I think the benefit was this. I think I understood, I got an early understanding of how the world worked. And I would say your, your social capital as a young person is physical. Yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. what you can enforce, right? When you get older, it's financial. True. You know what I'm saying? So I think I learned. It's funny how it shifts, huh? Absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. So I think I learned kind of how the world worked. And that's that like people are going to respond to you based on what you can provide them. And if they are afraid of you, you can provide them with a sense of security if you're on their team. Yeah. Wow. How does it feel to unravel this stuff, John? At 38 years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, does it feel, is it, is it like a, a breath of fresh air? I know it's hard to say those things out loud or think them probably, you know what I mean, to get back into it, but that's got to feel good ultimately. It feels good. It feels good, <laughs> but it feels um, like, like you're exposed. unfinished business okay. almost because uh, to the people I did hurt, like I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, you know, but they I've never had the chance to say that to them and I don't know if that lives with them yeah I that, guess you're gonna find out soon it sounds like you're gonna start you're gonna be calling people huh yeah I, I think that's I think that's the right way to do it wow good job Johnny I can't yeah. really even add much more much to that to be honest that that was just uh I think there's gonna be so many people listening when they hear that kind of truth coming from you as you're unraveling these things like everybody, you got to realize you're going to be working on yourself till you die. And, I mean, that's in being able to try to search through your past to figure out why you are the way you are, how you treat people, understanding that that's what was at that time in your life because you didn't know how to deal with it. No, essentially no clue. And now you're looking back thinking, fuck, yeah. but that's what maturity is. Right. And everybody goes through it. Right. So good work, man. Right. It's awesome. And right as, and right as it's closing, my mom's calling me. <laughs> let's uh let, 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 let's let, let's lighten it up you you have a a great way of doing that let's uh let's move on to Corey gregory time all right thank you fosco yes sir so i was thinking about um what i wanted to talk about today as i was training this morning and i realized you brought some good I ideas up earlier but we'll we'll, we'll save that for after <laughs> yeah I have some definitely uh good interesting things off camera john yes <laughs> but i would say uh I'm, I'm addicted to the freedom of entrepreneurship more. And I think we all are right. That's, that's part of what we search after. And I was trying to think of a way that I could pose that to somebody that maybe doesn't under, doesn't maybe understand it all the way that's listening, right? That from a child, and I see it in a couple of my kids actually currently, you know, there's a difference between wanting to do your own thing and like always one like every kid doesn't want to listen to their parents right no but i don't think any kid does yeah right but there's a difference between always wanting to essentially do it your way or to have that idea to move in your own path 
to like, there's just a difference to that. And I always kind of had that. Right. And then in high school, it was awful. Like I fucking just, and I was disrespectful to my mom. You know, I was, she's single mom. I, I think back the way I acted, like I would punch my kid in the face if he acted like that with my, with my wife. And it's like, I look at the way that I used to act and I was literally imposing not, it was disrespectful at the time if I think back, but I was imposing, I think this need to just do shit the way I wanted to do it at such a level that I couldn't like, I, I like couldn't express it any more than like a fucking erupting angry 17 year old sure. kid. Right. Absolutely. Cause of all kinds of different things. And when I think about the, the entrepreneur life that I've lived, it's really been for the yearning of just wanting to do shit. Cause I don't, it's never just my way. I mean, I'm obviously sure, me absolutely. and you work on right. team stuff all the time, but like just having that breath when you wake up and know that the day is fucking yours right? in that you can book a one way ticket. If you want to, you can fucking do this if you want to, or go into this business or that business. I just think that need for that freedom. It, what's interesting though, is I think about it. Most people think we're chained to this life, maybe because of no security. I obviously think of something completely different, but on the outside looking in, when I try to tell people that that's what I'm a brat with my own time and freedom because Absolutely. that's what I wanted this life to be like. Right. You know what I mean? And so I was trying to figure out a way that I could uh, kind of throw the ball to you too to see if that uh, you know provoked any type of emotion of how you feel and understand that there's probably people listening that maybe have an itch of that and never fucking scratched it. I couldn't not scratch it. Right. Like I couldn't, I, that, that was the fix that I was looking yeah. for was fucking this is mine. Yeah, I, I, I think, and I don't want to dilute our main event, but I think this leads to like um, confidence, right? Because I think everybody feels what, what you feel. I know I do about wanting to do what the fuck I want to do. You want to do when you want to do it. When I want to do it. <laughs> and, and coupling that with like knowing I'm prepared to do it, right? Yeah. It, it's irresponsible if you just say, you know, I want to fucking – uh, go play, you know, cards with my friends at 10 a.m. today, and it's too that that that, that that's yeah. irresponsible. But if you wake up and you're like, I know what I want to do from a career standpoint. Yes. I'm gonna do it. No one's gonna tell me the start time. No one's gonna tell me the end time. Uh, like, I think a lot of people feel that they, they there's just no fucking way in the world that they are confident enough because naysayers are everywhere yeah naysayers are typically the people closest to you a lot of the time and they're your friends and they're everyone they're 90 percent of the people you fucking fuck right fucking hang out they're, with they're everyone who's not happy with their situation and envious of the freedom they see in your eyes yeah you know what i'm saying so um as someone who lives similar to you Bro, there's only motherfucking one way for me, and this, 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 this is it. If you tried to stop me, I would fucking explode. I'd knock you. I'd knock yeah. your ass on your ass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, um, I don't think that everyone should try to do this because it sounds cool. I think, like, you know, you know, if the idea of not having, I always say it a handbook, not having structure. If you are like, bring it on, bitch. Yes. Like, I yes. got this. Like, then you can do it. But so many people, <clears throat> they hear it, and, and this sounds sexy, what we're talking about, but people, many people need structure. And if you rely on structure and you don't have the ability to be agile, what I mean by that is, you know, last night you're thinking about today we're going to do this or I'm going to do this. And then a phone call comes at 9 a.m. and you absolutely Changes audible everything. into something. Else. If you don't have that freedom of thought and the ability to understand why and how you have to move, don't play this game. Don't do this. Don't do this. But if you literally have a level of belief in yourself where it's like, bro, try to fucking get that fastball by me. I'm going to hit that bitch out of the park every day because yep. I've been sitting on it all night and I'm just waiting for you to throw it in the morning. That's it. That feeling, I guess one of the main things I want to get across 
that feeling and when you feed it properly and it works is worth all of the time it takes. Un, 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 undeniable, right, John? Unquestionably, because that's when you realize that money has nothing to do with this equation. No. Money has nothing bi- to do with it. it. It's the fact that you did uh, against what people think or whatever or unacceptance. You did what you wanted to do, not out of selfish reasons, because you were in touch with yourself. Yep. You're in touch with yourself, and you did it, and it fucking works. Now, just because it worked doesn't mean it works. You have to continually keep feeding it every yes. day. But that's where I think the addiction of entrepreneurship comes in because when you see it work, you could either be, see if you're a money guy, you count the money real quick and you take it and then it stops working. But if you're addicted to the feeling of, dude, that's my thought, it's fucking working. I'm gonna add new thoughts to it. Boom, 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 boom. That is, it's the most fulfilling thing ever because nobody gave you any guidance. This is all coming from your thoughts, your heart, your head, and you are impacting other people simply because you're driven enough to do what you want to do. And I think that breath of fresh air and fire when you wake up, like you feel, like I feel daily, comes from that feeling of knowing that you're in that pocket of I get I, the day is my own painting. I can make it whatever I want. Absolutely. And I, and I just want to stress that if you feel this type of way, it is worth all those long 20 hour days and these ideas that did work and didn't work. And it, it is worth that because when you finally reach that, whether it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is, it is absolutely worth it. There is no fucking way that I wouldn't sign back up to do it all again. There's just no way no that way. I wouldn't. Hey, I'm a lifer, bro. Of course. I'm in this club for life. I thought you would enjoy this topic. John. Broker bust. Because I know you I'm feel in. I know you feel this way of mil- like Hey, this this way dictates my life in every facet. Word. I'm in. Okay. The, hey. I don't think we can even go any further. <laughs> the fucking <laughs> mic drop. Yeah. All right, it's time for butt life. White zebra, uh, dirty Jeremy. Butt life bouncing <laughs> onto the screen. <laughs> What we got today, Jerm? All right, everyone, keep on sending us questions at Biz and Biceps on Instagram. He's got his own Twitter. mic today. He's really he's excited. Serious. He's got a big smile from here to here. I feel good about this. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's he's yeah. he's in the circle, kind of. Yep. Anyway, it's at Biz and Biceps <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter. If we use your question on the air, we'll send out a free T-shirt for you. So, first question: What's the difference between an addicted personality and an obsessive personality when it comes to business and success? Are they the same thing? Well. An addictive personality, I don't know if it plays into uh, success because, okay, so we drew a parallel on one of our previous shows about how good salesmen typically on outside, outside of business, outside of sales, have an addictive personality, but that addictive personality isn't what makes them great. It's just a common trait that goes side by side with it. So um, an obsessive personality in business, um, it, it's it, that's for people, honestly, who should be in some form of organized operations. Like uh, when you're obsessive about the way things look, the way things are, a fucking spreadsheet, a schedule, that... Every business needs that, bro. Yes. And that's a very important position. And if that's how you feel, it's almost okay to be obsessive in business if that's where you're plugging your energy into because you're going to be the most organized guy or gal. You are going to have everything dialed in tight for you, your partners, your coworkers. But addictive, addictive really connects to uh, the use of substances and I, I'm just not going to draw a, a parallel between obsessive and addictive because I'm not uh, educated enough to, to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to read the question one, one, one more time, Jeremy. Is, uh, what's the difference between an addictive personality and an obsessive personality when it comes to business and success? Uh, yeah, I, that's, that's a tough... So uh, the first thing, I'm just going to say what popped into my head. First thing that popped into my head is... I'm obsessed about exercise. I know that's a fact, but I'm addicted to the way I feel after it. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's what I'm looking for, right? Yeah. So does that answer this question? I'm not so sure, but that's <laughs> the thing that popped into my head. Yeah. And I think that um, I think that you have to be obsessive at some level, or you have to be obsessive about your business or what you're after. It's never gonna fucking happen. I think that's the fucking truth. Yeah. I don't think you necessarily have to be addicted to anything, but I think right. you do have to have an obsessive quality. I don't right. think you can be a half-assed motherfucker and really accomplish shit. Yeah, to be straight talk wireless up in this mug. I would agree. Next question. How do, you bot life? How, do you bot life? How do you balance being yourself and not caring what other people, others think of you in a professional setting where, say, your boss's opinion of you matters? Ooh. Oh, just listen to me and listen to me fucking clearly here. Okay? I'm listening, John. I'm listening. Nobody in this world got anywhere giving a fuck what anyone thinks of them. Like, this is the most basic tenant of fucking success, individuality. Nobody got anyone. Nobody got anywhere caring about what people think of them. It's it, it, listen, if you have to deliver on your job, if you have to deliver on your task, that's great. And if that's going to make your boss happy, that's fine. That's your job. But trying to mold yourself into somebody that you're not, your brain is in the wrong place. Do what you have to do honor your commitments, respect people. But at the end of the day, if you operate with a moral code, it's simple. <laughs> operate with a fucking moral code and all these things are out of your control. And when I say all these things, I'm talking about what people think of you. This is another disease. I talked about earlier how, how spending money is a disease when you don't have it. This is a disease. Always worrying and thinking about what someone else is thinking about in relation to you. It will hold, dude, I've seen it a million times and I've seen it take down smart people. I've seen it take down average people. You, if you are struggling from this, it's okay. And no, it's common, but I promise you this. It, it's, like a, it's, it's, it's like a drug. Until you kick it, you will not experience the feeling of freedom. Yeah. And until you are free, <laughs> you will not be able to share your gifts with the world. So in short, this is a rule. You cannot give a fuck what anyone thinks. Just operate by a moral code. Yeah, it's like uh there there's never a true freedom when you're constantly worried about that. Dude. Basically, you're in the fucking crock pot and you got the lid on that bitch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a right. new restaurant with that cheese dip. You know what's so funny when I think of stuff like this? Like I see people um sometimes in my town and uh, and I I don't necessarily think they dislike me, but I always think to myself, like I don't always, but sometimes it crosses my mind. What do these motherfuckers really think, right? Like, it would never hurt me from trying to do what I'm doing, but it intrigues me, like, what their perception or, um, yeah, just what their thoughts are. Because I know, hey, John, just like you, you know they have them. Like, there's no fucking question. They see guys like us operate the way we do. You know they do. But it makes me laugh, actually, not puts me like in, in a corner sure because if you put me in a corner i'm gonna fucking fight you out of it just like you would yeah. right so it's like it's one of those things that if you have that much value if your self-worth is really based on what these other people really think which is based on limited information complete observation and a bunch of bullshit judgment. and judgment based on by the way their own insecurities and fucking faults dude how can you weigh your life in on that? Bro. These motherfuckers ain't us. They ain't no. you. You might have more confidence than them. The person that you're thinking, you know, listening to. Like, get the fuck out of here. It's yeah. just, let, here. You know, like the ball and chain thing from the old prison? Like, that's just like putting that shit on your fucking ankle and dragging it around. Because you're never going to be truly free when that's how you operate. It's just not possible. And look, my feelings get hurt sometimes and motherfuckers say shit and I actually hear it. But at the end of the day, I fucking think about it for like 10 seconds. Yeah. No, I mean, no. it's like, and I'm a hurry. I'm a human. John Fosco is still human. Yeah. Most of the but, time. But, 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 but you, you know what? No, what's interesting is when you said that I, I said to myself, and, and this is, this is where there's no right and there's wrong. You don't. No one hurts my feelings yeah. because I don't fucking care. If you want to say something about me, that's disrespectful or judgmental. Yeah. Like I know you're in the wrong. 
So either you could say it to my face and take that gamble, or you could take oh, that gamble, oh, oh, boy. Oh, 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 yeah, take that, <laughs> take that gamble, son. See what happens. And oh, 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 but you just have no menial value to me, sure, because you're, you're throwing shots at me, and I know by definition that's wrong. So it affects me zero. Yeah. So mine, it still actually affects me for a second, yeah. but then I wash it through the machine of sure. this ain't shit. Right. Peace out. Peace homies. out. We got one more germ. Q3 butt life. What advice do y'all have for going into an interview? What quali- qualities do y'all look for when interviewing to hire? So we've done we've done two episodes that I would you should refer go back. People yeah. To that, people love those that, that that are very highly listened to about interviewing. But so I just think the most common uh, misconception about interviewing is that you need to do anything but be yourself like yeah. that. You need to prepare this act that is like a power. No dude. Like if you're skilled enough for the job, if you have gone to school and, or were trained for this position, you got nothing to worry about. They're going to ask you questions and you need to look them in their eye and you need to answer them like you would answer someone you respect, like your mother or your grandfather. Answer them with intent. Look these people in the eye and let them know that you have the knowledge and you can answer what they're looking for. Do not psych yourself out, dude, and and and, and get this whole presentation in your head together because what happens when you put a presentation in your head together for a job interview well fucked you don't know what questions they're going to ask and your whole presentation just got fucking turned on its head when they asked the third question that you had no you got no clue what they're gonna so you gotta look this is this is a great part of business actually it's learning to just go with the flow and ultimately you're prepared or you're not and if you are then you don't need to put on this act, put on this show. If you're not, you're not going to get the position. But uh, preparation and and confidence is is all you need going into a job interview because authenticity um, cannot be duplicated. Well, I'm glad you asked this question, Jeremy, because I just went through my first job interview the other day, officially. I was one of your resources. You were one of my uh, yeah. contacts, uh, yeah. my uh, my re- my uh, references. Yes. So <clears throat> I did have one other job interview when I was 20 or 19 to get the desk job at World Gym, and I didn't get it, so I must have fucked that interview up, which I'm kind of glad I did because then I started my own shit. Yeah. But I went to – I had to do an official interview for my Columbus State uh, job as a teacher. We'll call that Professor Dirty Jeremy. And uh, <laughs> that's a stretch. But anyway, so I, I, he, here's my strategy on job interviews. One, I've never had one, but this would be my strategy, except for just recently, was they got to know you. So I would try to find a way to slip in something that's, I don't know, unique pers- personally, because they got to work with you. I, I think that's, I've always sold myself on a personal level at some point. They got to maybe like you, Because an attractive personality written by most any motivational or fucking uh, inspirational type people is always cool for for workplace. People want to be around you. You don't have to put an act on, but you can be yourself, which is your attractive personality to John's point. And, you know, they have to trust you enough within that interview to give you the job. So I think once again, if you're putting on an act or acting like someone else, I told these motherfuckers in the first 30 seconds, I never had a job interview before. Like I was going to get the job anyway because I'm a million percent qualified to do what I'm trying to do there. But at the end of the day, I did these things. I, I made sure that they, uh, I was very honest with them saying like this process is completely new to me. I'm, I'm following it, but it's like I've never done this before. And the lady was like, you've never had a job interview. I'm like, no. She's like, well, I guess you've ran your own business for 20 years. So why would you interview? I was like, exactly. I was like, but you know, bring the questions on. I'm excited to, you know, uh, you know, yeah, go through it. And, and I was super honest, acted like myself. If I didn't know the answer because I'm not in their box of academia, I didn't know the answer. It was like no big deal. And, and I told him, but that's why I'm going to ask you guys questions, you know, so I can, I can do this effectively. And I think at the end of the day, they trusted through my experience and my capabilities that I could do the job. Right. And and that's, that's kind of what my strategy was with my only job interview. (laughs) 
There it is. And John gave me an amazing reference. All my friends are my references. There it is. A lot of five star ratings. A lot of five star ratings, Fosco. Yeah. I saw yours came back at three. I was fucking pissed. No, I just kidding. All right, on to the main event. Ring the bell, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Fosco. I think we've been kind of um, teasing it, we'll say, the whole show sure. about just where our confidence comes from, how we became us over this 20 year. You know, time frame, 20 for me, maybe 18 for you. I'm a little, a little older. Mm. But uh, at the end of the day, like, I think there's a bazillion people on the planet that would love to be able to buy. A lot of people, dude. Bazillion. A lot of people. That's, I don't know how many zeros that is, John. Uh, people, Jeremy, Wikipedia that, bazillion. But I, I I'm, I'm think one, it's a real number. It's a fucking real number, John. So market, I think we could. Aid, dude. So if we could, you know, bottle up the Fosco confidence. Yeah. Not the old stuff that you said wasn't true confidence. That wasn't true. No, but that, now, yeah, yeah, sure. which is obviously true confidence, yeah. and um, and sell it to people, they would buy the fuck out of it. They would be the highest selling SKU at MaxEffortMuscle.com. Hey, man. So, Let's do it. so how, how do we instruct them or show kind of our process, how we got here? I think um, my big thing is I repelled, and, and I'm going to take it back because mm-hmm. this actually this just popped in my head and it makes sense. Or awesome. I had a repellent to what I perceived as people who talked about something like they knew it when they didn't know it. When I was a kid, I would watch people, a lot of times my dad and other people, talk about shit like they knew it and they had no fucking clue. And I would always inquire always why and and i'd always get shut down shut down shut down so as i grew up i'm like dude fuck these motherfuckers who just want they more than anything they want to be right they want to be right and they want to be all knowing all that means is you got a fucking small dick (laughs) or your fucking ego is the size of fucking New York city. Okay. (laughs) So, so here, here, here's the deal. I think from dealing with all of that, I developed a thought process of when I speak, I want to speak the truth. And if you press me on it, I can back it up in a non-confrontational way. So, because I speak on things that I choose to speak on, and the reason I choose to speak on them is because I know I'm knowledgeable in those areas, I'm naturally confident because I'm not out here talking about neuroscience. Yeah. Because I'd be a fucking idiot if Halo I was, neuro. because I don't know shit about it. So I can choose my days, I can choose my businesses, I can choose my associates, my partners, my employees, and I can talk about what I have knowledge in. That gives me confidence because I know what the fuck I know. And I will never, ever just try to be a guy who fucking knows something or says I know something just because it makes my ego feel good. It's like everyone, listen, I think being right or the feeling of being right is a natural human trait. I think it's a disgusting, disgustingly unattractive human trait, though. And I know for a fact it pushes people away. Yeah. That's why. Know-it-alls. I call them know-it-all. No, no nothing. nothings. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah. I've and, heard you say and, that and before. And there's a couple people I'm not going to name that are know-it-all, know-nothings in my you know, my family and, and, and what have you. But um, either way, it's like when you know and you've put in the time into anything, whether it be your work or your passion and you're speaking on it, dude, knowledge breeds confidence. Knowledge breeds confidence. I know that I can speak on shit that I'm knowledgeable about. So I think just at the core of it, before we go further, <clears throat> it's understanding that I'm not speaking about shit that I have no clue about. Yeah. I'm speaking on shit that I truly believe I'm an expert in. Experience and preparation that is taking you to an expert level. That's why I always think um, when people ask me this question just like in person, like, gee, why does it come off like so easy or confident on camera or whatever? And that's the same thing I say. I'm like, I'm not 
telling you about something I don't know about. I do it for so many hours, for so many years that it's like, it's almost like people think maybe like you're faking it, right? The fake motherfuckers, you get exposed. I mean, it's almost like, I think part of the other thing is, is when I get up in front of people and I'm talking about the things that I know about, I don't, I might have a, a, a mild nervousness, but just because you're in a different situation, but the stuff that's going to come out of my mouth actually lessens the nervousness because of the preparation. So I think it comes back to John, the craft, the years that it really takes and that, the, that you don't come in year one being some confident know-it-all because people are going to see right through it. It's fake as shit. Sure. It takes time. It takes calloused hands. It takes the callous mind that Goggins talk about. It takes all these ups and downs and experiences. And then when you're actually speaking to the world, it comes off confident because you know it like literally what the back of your hand, they say. Right. right? right. And I think it's interesting that one thing I'll, I take from Gary V and when he said it made sense to me, is he said, I didn't even open my mouth till I was 30. And I respected that because that's, I didn't have the internet really till I was, you know, or yeah. that, that content for me didn't really start happening till I was in business for over a decade for, for myself. And so I think that helped a lot because when I was speaking, not about the business part, but the training part, I had so many hours involved with clients that it was like, oh, turn that fucking thing on. Right. Like I got all this shit in my right. fucking golf bag. Like, let's go. And I, and I think that that might be where people are missing it. You know, they just haven't spent enough time in their trade in their inner trade. Yeah. And, and one thing I just kind of popped into my head is, okay, there's confidence when we're talking about professional life, Yeah. but then there's maybe what needs to come first and that's personal confidence. Agreed. And, um, uh, like we alluded to earlier and so many things tie into this, you know, getting to a point where you just being you yeah. is good enough for you is crucial because for example, I'll use myself. If someone wants to say, Oh, what, what, what the fuck is he talking about? He wears sunglasses inside and he wears a backwards. Head. <laughs> I know that you're judging me. So you literally don't register. So, Personal confidence is knowing that I am good enough. Like I am good enough. I, there's nothing wrong with me. I have nothing to apologize for. And I take pride in how I conduct myself. I take pride in my behavior. I take pride in the fact that I'm trying to improve every day. See, if, if you're doing those things and someone wants to fire darts at you and try to cut you down, Bro, you're building up, you're building up an exterior that's impenetrable. Yeah. Because nobody no nobody Great word. can hurt you, bro. Great word, impenetrable. I can yeah, say it. impenetrable. <laughs> but nobody can hurt you. Agreed. Because you understand you. And so many people put stock in what others think of them, and they never give themselves a chance to understand themselves and then after understanding themselves saying, you know what? I'm good, bro. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. And when they're faced, which we inevitably will, will be with someone who wants to cut us down, judge us, hurt us. We know that's not because of us. Yeah. It's because of them. And, and that is that, that is the ultimate personal confidence when you are truly comfortable in your own skin and everything you do from the way you dress to the way you talk to the way you walk to the way you interact with people is yours and you own it when i think that feeling which i think few people get right and it comes with a price of work that a lot of people either don't know how to do yeah. or they're listening to this right now so that's they're, they're attempting to do it, right, sure, Johnny? Sure, sure. And, and I just want to let, like, where mine came from initially was from the weight room. I was working to feel better about what I saw physically. Everybody can say, oh, that doesn't matter, but it does matter. We talked about it in that episode a long time ago about physical appearance. Like, your parents are your parents. You're born the way you're born. You can't pick them, right? right? You can't right. pick the way you look or the, what your genetics are. You can't pick any of that stuff. But what you can do is choose to work to make yourself feel better physically from what you put into your body and what you do on a regular basis. Now, that's only part of it. 
Now I happen to be in that business. So that's a heavy part of my life. But on top of it, to have a true strategy, whether it's listen to business and biceps twice a week, do read David Goggins, book, like have something in place. It takes hours of work to feel the way I believe you just said, because I don't think you just feel Year, that way. Years of work. Years of work and hours a day is what yeah, I meant. Yeah, yeah. Hours a day, years of work. And people say, well, I don't have all that. You have to make <laughs> some type of strategy. There's, there's a strategy in everything. And if you truly want to feel like that force field is built around you, because I can't say the other word. If you build a force field around you where the darts are just fly off. And you can go about your way and then what's your chance to talk at work or in your business, it comes off the comp because you, you know, you, and when I think you can be comfortable with you and you have the craft and you have these things that you work on every day. And by the way, you got to continue to always do it. Then that the pieces can fall together. And even there, there's still pitfalls, yep. but that's really where the confidence comes from. Everybody. I didn't just wake up one day and feel like I was fucking awesome. Yep. I mean, that is not the fun, like all of these processes from, you know, going into middle school and the high school lifting and, and trying to find somebody I could look up to and, and then searching, always searching. I've been searching for it my whole life, right? A ways to draw on. I don't think it's like we talk about motivation has that like quick expiration yeah. because it's kind of like, I don't know, kind of fake. Mine was always looking for the material that I could just rely back on when I fell into those, uh, sure. I guess, mild, dark times that sure. like go, no, G, boom, pull you out of it, keep you on it. Because once again, keeping that path and not going too far one way or the other is kind of the key long term. And you have to find those things that can do that for you. Yeah, uh, I agree 100%. And I just think, you know, I think what translates maybe a confident person into a good p business person is... I, I, I've always said this. I know me and you have talked about this. I don't want to know what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to talk about it. I want to know what I'm not good at so I can get better at it. So I can add to my repertoire because adding to your repertoire and getting good at things and talking about and being comfortable talking about what you're weak at or maybe a personality flaw, mm -hmm. right? That pushes people away right? Those aren't easy things to talk about. But once you put that into practice and you start talking about it, you start realizing, oh shit. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. I all like, we always see things through our own filter. Yep. And once we realize that we affect people in a certain way, I'm telling you get addicted to fucking saying like, what the fuck do I suck at? And, and, and spend your time. Like, no one needs to spend their time on what they're dominant at. Yeah. Like, 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 like I don't need to spend time every day fucking talking about how I can sell shit. It, it, it's just, what you what's do. that going to do for me? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's how I can communicate with people better. It's how I can uh, be calmer. It's how I can be more patient. It's how I can add all these things. But I don't think people want to stop, look at someone they trust or admire and say, what is, uh, what is unattractive about me? You know, what pushes you away from me? Um, and trust that person that they're going to give you feedback and then take it in a non-defensive way. Yeah. There's a power when you can do that. John. Oh my God, there's a power. And then when you take it and then you start making changes, bro, your confidence is next level. And then, and then you take it right back to business. What do you do in business? The same thing. You don't talk about, oh, we just made five and a half million last year. No, no. You talk about, okay, how are we going to see a 35% year over year increase? We were really weak here last. Let's say last year was a great year. Doesn't fucking matter. Let's mm -hmm. talk about what we were weak at. That is the consummate process of growth. That whether it be personal or business, that is growth. Growth is not talking about what you do good. Yeah, It's not. There's no growth in that. Yeah, it's the same because you're already good at it. You already got it. You got it. And yeah. you can share it. The, what you do with that is share it with other people. Have other people get good at it. That That's what you do with what you're good at, man. Fucking share that gift. But that doesn't mean you still can't get good at other shit. Yeah, for sure. 
Absolutely. I think it's uh, if we kind of in closing, John, what's yeah. Yeah. what's the two or three things after all that dialogue that these guys can work on right now if they're sitting there thinking, man, I just wish I felt better about myself. Get your iPhone notepad out uh, or a regular notepad and write down five things about yourself. If you're being honest, uh, do this alone. Don't ask anybody uh, to start and say what am I ashamed of about myself? What am I weak at? And what do I need to get better at? And through executing that list and working on it, you'll feel much better about yourself. And you'll build confidence. I love it. Great way to end, John. Yeah. Hey, this show is brought to you by Common Bond, Fosco. Common Bond is where people who went to college and hopefully got a great education can go to save some money. Because listen, college is a investment. For many people, it's a great investment. Yep. Um, but it comes with debt, right? It comes Lots. with debt, right? And if you go to commonbond.co backslash biceps, they will take you through the spa treatment process, I like to call ah, it. Ah, I like that. And they will save you up to $24,000 over the life of uh, your loan. And they will refinance your college debt. And these guys are in the business of doing that. So don't just go to a bank where they treat you like shit. Go to Common Bond where this is their business. And uh, they've been excelling at it. And I know a lot of our listeners have benefited immensely. And if you're looking for software to help your business, you must go to Capterra, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash biceps. They have over 700 specific categories of software with over 750,000 reviews. That is the only spot you need to go when you need software for your business. I mean, there's no one that's doing it bigger than Capterra. No one doing it bigger than Capterra, dog. <laughs> Maurice Claret on vacation. Mo in Florida. Johnny Fosco. Yeah. Can the podcast be stopped? The, the podcast, podcast can't be stopped. Can't be stopped.